Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. Yeah, I know I hadn't posted in a while. I know it's the same thing over and over again. But I get it 100%. So all of those that are still listening on and you, you come in whenever you see me make a post, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all, your loyalty, because I understand that I am not consistent a lot lately. And it's, you know, and it's, I do want to be this, this content creator because it's a space that I actually operate in as far as the subject and topics I'm talking about. But yeah, I had a lot going on and a lot of personal stuff. Like I still say to this day, you know, I, like last time I posted, you know, I was talking about my issues and the lack of motivation and stuff because of things that's going on. And it still does affect me to a degree. It's, it's now I had a lot more personal things going on, especially with my business and stuff too. So, so there's a lot of things I've been working on. Uh, trying to do this partnership with uh, Google, not trying to work towards this partnership with Google. So I, I am doing that right now. And what is this involving doing is just establishing a relationship with them and doing business with them in the form, form of their, uh, their cloud computing area and generative AI stuff, so Gemini. And so working towards that with my business engineering tomorrow. Also doing political stuff because it is, you know, it's campaign season. So I do work with this group called Indivisible Georgia down here in Georgia. Indivisible Georgia. So, um, and what we do is we get out, we do uh, voter registration, we do lit drops about uh, voter registration, making sure that you you know, you are still eligible in the system and you haven't been purged out because Republicans have been purging people out. And I'm calling Republicans because it's a Republican state, since y'all was gonna talk about Democratic states, it's a Republican state, and they're trying to purge out voters that are actually active voters because they have people going on now that's been voting for the past two years. And then by the, the uh, Secretary of State office, they uh, say that, the only way that you can get purged out of the system if you've been an inactive voter for, like, I think it's like a year to two years or whatever, but people have been active and they're still purging them out. So those kind of things and just getting out the, uh, about issues and policies that's affecting the average everyday person, which is what I talk about all the time when I start talking about politics is that, yeah, you want to be involved as far as federal level goes, but you want to be heavily involved when it comes to local stuff because that's what affects you in your personal life. That's what hits home faster and quicker than anything else that you can worry about on a federal level because, you know, you got your three branches of government has to go through. And it's the same thing locally, but at least you would get to see that effect quick, fast, and hurry rather than it getting done and passed in law up in the federal system and then got to get passed down to the states. And the states could reject it, which Kemp does do that down here. The states could reject it, and then it's a... It's a Tip and tap battle going back and forth. But anyway, that's what I do with Indivisible. So, and then I've been out with uh, doing stuff for the Harris campaign because I am one. I put out that thing that said I was wrong. So, uh, you know, I've been doing stuff as far as being active with them and doing lit drops to assure that, you know, she gets in the office, but she's going to get in the office. So why are you out to support Kamala? Um, part of my other hobbies that I do is I mentor youth. And so I'm constantly, I coach football. I'm a scout leader, cup master and so forth. And a lot of times I, I'm constantly telling my football players, my scouts, which are boys and girls, that you can always do what you put your mind to. And especially my daughters and the girls in the scout troops that I um, come in over, constantly advising them that, hey, you can do this, you can do anything you mind to. Uh, take a look at um, in 2008, where Barack Obama made the first African American in the White House. Uh, that just started the breaking, in my opinion, the glass ceiling. So the barrier uh, that can be eliminated by Vice President Kamala Harris is that much more speed because she can break that barrier, institute the, the well-known fact that any child can be in their mind to, and hopefully it's those it's aspirations for their kids that if they study, if they do right, stay on the right path, even though they still make bad choices, stay on the right path, eat the vegetables, things like that, they can achieve whatever they believe. So that's that's one of the primary reasons that uh, I'm supporting uh, Kamala Harris. I ran as a delegate for Joe Biden. This is not my first rodeo. I've been a delegate for national elections several times. This is also my first year to be a presidential, presidential elector. It was in Georgia in December. So that's another reason I'm hopeful that I'm in the state of Georgia so I can do that historic event for her as a presidential elector in the state. Thank you. So why are y'all excited to vote for Kamala? I'm excited to vote for Kamala because it'd be historic. I feel like, um, you know, we need uh, a black woman in the White House. Um, I'd like to have that there for my kids, you know. I've got uh, two girls. I've got a, a transgender boy, and I want somebody there who respects people. I'm an immigration lawyer. I think Kamala can, is, I trust Kamala. 
to protect immigrants, but also make the process orderly, uh, better for everybody. So I got a lot of reasons for being excited, but I just love Kamala, and I think she'll make a great president. So, um, like Josh already mentioned, our youngest is a transgender boy. We also have two girls, and, and women's rights mean so much to us, and I'm so excited for the trajectory of this country, if we can get back to more reasonable, more loving. The, the rhetoric lately has been so dangerous and so frightening for our future. We're, we're hopeful. And... You know, I love her, but a vote for Kamala is a vote against fascism. I seriously believe that Absolutely. Trump wins. Um, our democracy is dead. He's already told us. I believe him. I yeah. believe him for everything he says, but when he said that, I, I believe that. Yeah, because he wrote it down. Yeah, exactly. Thank you all. So what I want to cover on today real quick, I mean, this is like a real a, a quick episode and a quick podcast is the thing that I talk, because y'all should be following me on all of my platforms, like follow me on my TikTok, follow me on my Instagram and stuff where I post a lot of things, not daily, but I do post weekly on those uh, platforms. So definitely follow me there. But one of the comments I see all the time is that there were, uh, these Republicans or these MAGA people always said that, you know, we are like these one trick ponies that we always want to talk about people racist or people misogynistic. And my thing is, you know, I call a spade a spade because when you posting stuff like this and then <laughs> you want to say that, you know, uh, or reposting stuff to say that, you know, uh, these are the only way affecting these people uh, in greater in great ways. So I'm like, so what, what do I call something like that? Or when you say stuff like this. Sir, do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. And you're talking about people are just now calling themselves black. I mean, what, what am I supposed to call it? A, a spade is a spade. A horse is a horse. A racist is a racist. I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not the person that calls everything that, that other people do that's affecting black people racist stuff. But when you do racist things, I'm going to call you a racist. I don't, because, you know, it is, kind of is what it is. I'm not one of those people that want to always throw that out there and, and, and weaponize it. I'm not. Because they weaponize stuff against us all the time. And it's not this whataboutism thing. It's just the fact that. I'm calling it for what it is, especially when you come to me and tell me as a black man that 45 has done more for black men and more black people and black men, especially. <laughs> I say the fact is that I've done more for the black community than any president since Abraham Lincoln. I say it. Nobody can dispute it. Nobody can dispute it. It's true. Than any other president. And I'm like, well, give me a policy that, that, that says it shows me that. I'm like, data is data. I'm like, I, you understand I'm a data person. I'm an engineer, so I, I need data to prove that fact in that argument. Because you can't, you can say something blankly, but there has to be a policy or law that actually that corresponds with that to show this is what was put into place, and because this was put into place, it causes change in this avenue, and it allowed doors to be opened up for minority and black people to be able to uh, be to get jobs, especially in the jobs they want to work in. But you don't do that. Or then when you turn around and say stuff like this, the fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now. And all this stuff that you've all heard before, but when you're telling me that the only the, the migrants are coming over here and, and, and Biden and the Harris administration are allowing these migrants to come over here and they're taking all these black people jobs, well, what black job? Again, I just told you I'm an engineer. You know how much education I had to get and studying I had to do become, I'm a network security engineer on top of that too, to become an engineer, in, in any form of engineering. It takes a lot of education and skill sets to be able to do that. You're trying to tell me that somebody that's randomly coming across the border is coming out there, is taking my job? So, I mean, if, if that's, that's my job, and I'm only one of probably four or five black people in a team of like 30 to 35, and the rest of them are either Indian, white, or Asian, well, then what are their jobs in? Because if, I'm, if they're coming and taking my job, well, then what do you say about the people that's, in, that's working in the same job skill in, in the field that I'm working in? So, there again. 
I have to call it for what it is, and I have to call people racist because that's exactly what they are, especially when they do things to show that they are racist. And it seems like this MAGA group over here, that's extremely what they thrive in. And the other thing that pisses me off is that's what they always want to point out. And then they say, well, you know that uh, he has been the greatest president. And then you have black people that supported him, too. And they said, well, he, um, he was the one that helped give us money and stimulus when we needed it. And I'm like, no, it wasn't because he didn't want to give you any money. I'm going for Trump. Not Republican, so I like J.D. Vance. I have to go Trump, man. Yeah. I have to. Or, our, yeah, Trump. I'm running for Trump, so. I'm supporting Trump. Trump for the win. Tell me why. I can't really call that right now, but I just feel like she's not good for president. She's good vice, but not for the actual lead role for the country. Does it have anything to do with being a woman? No. Mm-mm. No, because I feel like women, mm, nah, you're not going to Hey, bro, come on now, nah, dog. Come <laughs> on, man. And that's what frustrates me, too, when it comes to people. It's just the, the lack of understanding and the ignorance when they say stuff like that. Because like, you can go up and, and look and see. You don't even have to even do any homework or research. Just do, just do a quick Google search, and you can see video footage of reporters and everybody else. Where he's, they've been there with him, and he said all these things on camera because he doesn't care what he says. He does not care what he says. He just throws it out there and he doesn't apologize about anything. Just like this lie about this pizza place up in, I think it's Philadelphia or whatever, that's going around now. Somebody tried to jump in my comment section and, snow, and say that uh, come, the Harris team came in to this pizza place and had bust in paid actors and forced all the real people out of the restaurant. And Snopes actually did uh, um, a full-fledged investigation, talked to a business owner, talked to local people around there, and found it wasn't even the case. Yeah, they, uh, people that knew about it, because I work in, I work in um, public service. Well, I don't work in public service, but I'm, I'm active and I volunteer in public service stuff. So when the, the Harris team or any political candidate is coming into town as a Democrat, they notify us and ask, ask us if we want to be there and present, and then we have to put in an application and it's a whole bidding process. It's like you have to go in there and you have to put in an application. Well, I ain't bidding, but it's a lottery process. And they actually, they'll, they'll pick out whoever, you know, through randomly can get to go and see these people. So it wasn't no paid actors. They did have some rest, regular uh, people that was there dining in the restaurant. And a lot of other people were actually uh, campaigners that was out in the local area, local campaigners that wanted to come out and meet them too. So... It's not paid actors. And then me as a security person, me as a security person, again, I do security, me as a security person, if I, why would I want to have agitators in a place? Like, if you, because again, if I know they're coming, that means they know they're coming, which is why they was outside protesting when they, before they even actually showed up and arrived. So me being Secret Service, knowing 45 and got shot at, didn't get shot, but got shot at, he, uh, then you, you know, and that just happened, Secret Service had to lay off or put some people on paid leave, on why did an investigation, or leave, or suspended, because of the incident that happened there. Do you think they're gonna repeat that same thing again? So if they're going to a closed off environment, and their potential 45 MAGA people there, which is crazy, crazy people, in the restaurant, in a closed environment, you think I'm gonna put my candidate in there, or anybody in there that works in office, that this in a potential dangerous situation, I wouldn't do that. I sure as hell would not do that. And Secret Service actually did go in there and vet everybody that was in the restaurant, including the volunteers that volunteer for the local Democratic Party. So they interviewed all of them to make sure they were legit people before they let in uh, Harris and Waltz. So it, it's like, come on now, this is just, you know, and then the lady that challenged me on it, I presented her with the facts and she didn't come back and argue anything else. And then the, the video she copied me on with MAGA people saying, I'm like, I trust MAGA people about as much as I'm going to trust 45 who never come back and apologize about anything. So I was like, the minute he come back and start apologizing for his wrongdoings, then I start believing these MAGA people when the lies that they come up with, which it's all lies anyway. So, and because when I ask for facts, they can never give facts. So that's what she asked too. She said, well, you don't believe the people that was, no, I don't believe them. If they're MAGA people, I don't believe them because they're liars. Again, because you're telling me as a black man all the time, and I'm going to keep coming back to this one because I have an issue with this, that he's done more for black people and black men than any other president. And I'm like, well, prove it to me. Give, give me something to prove it to me. So that, that's it. It was something short and quick. And I, I find this because she's going to get in office. I mean, she's going to win. I just find this campaign season or this election season kind of interesting because he goes back to the same thing over and over again of misogynistic stuff and calling women nasty 
and saying the only way that they got to where they were is because of uh, them being a woman and if they're beautiful or they're performing sex acts. And I'm to Mike, to me alone, I don't understand how any woman will support anything like that because I can make that claim on any woman. And they would be like, I worked my behind off to get to where I was. You did. And you're deserving of where you are. But when people like that say stuff like that, I'm like, how do you stand with them? Like, how, how is it you stand with them knowing they believe that to their heart of hearts, that that's the only way a woman can ever get up top and get to an executive level is because she slept her way up to the top. And then you walk, follow behind somebody like that and says he's the greatest person of all time. And then black people, for y'all to support him, and he refers to y'all as the blacks. I've done more for the blacks than any other president. And he can never even give you a reason as to what, a policy as to what he's done to help y'all out. Y'all are ignorant and stupid. And I'm gonna call it just like, I'm not gonna call you Uncle Tom, I'm just call you ignorant and stupid because that's exactly what you are. And I'm not telling that you gotta go jump on a Harris ticket. I'm not saying that at all. Vote for who you wanna vote for, but just not that fool. Because I'm like, if you're gonna support anybody, at least support somebody that's actually trying to make change and help out your community. He's done nothing and put no policy in place to try to help out our community. At least if Democrats present stuff, and before you say, well, what has the Democrats done for me? Man, go look at some of the policies they put out there. You know, Go to congress.gov. I mean, I think that's what the, the website is. As a matter of fact, I'll post it in the description. Go there, and you can look at what bills or what policies are being presented. Some of the stuff don't even make it to the House floor, but it is it's written up. And Ileon Omar got a bunch of stuff to help out black, the black community. But you don't know that because it never makes it to the House floor, but it's actually been sponsored, and she actually has a lot of people that co-signed on it, too, to actually put it out there. So it's a lot of people in Congress, these our Congress people, that are presenting bills to actually make change and affect our community, but because it's not popular, it doesn't make it to the floor. It didn't go to the Speaker of the House and then make it to the actual floor for them to vote on. So before you start spewing this ignorance of nobody's doing anything for us, they actually are trying to, but it's because we don't show up in droves and we don't do enough to make sure that our politicians are hearing our voice to do what we ask them to do and if they're not replacing them. So you want change, get involved, get active. And stop feeding into the BS. And when people spew it to you, go look up the facts before you actually start believing it. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for being loyal. All of my active supporters, I don't care if you were one or two people that actually look at my stuff and you like my stuff. Thank y'all for sticking around. I promise you I'm trying to get better. <laughs> but life be life, and as I'm sure life is be life for you as well, too. And this is a political season, so I'm heavily busy with that. And I'm trying to promote my business and push my business with engineering tomorrow. And then also trying to get another book, because I'm planning about writing another book to get that started and you know just trying to survive in this economy which i am surviving this economy and make money the best way i can on top of with my debt my regular job so thank y'all for being loyal thank y'all for coming to buy thank y'all all for the likes that i get the shares that i get the people just getting the views all of y'all that follow me on all of my social media platforms and you like my stuff over there thank y'all i love y'all i appreciate y'all i'm just doing what i do and i'm doing what i do out these streets to get the voice out and the word out of the people's opinions and educate people the right way on how to do stuff and listen to stuff. I don't care if it's technology and I don't care if it's politics. That's just me just trying to be an active person. So when I leave this world, I know I left something behind with me and it's not just existing here. To be born, to be raised, to work, to die, and then have kids and that's it and I'm going. I will plan on leaving a legacy behind for my family and leaving a legacy behind for my name. That's, that's who I am. Antonio Hicks, that's exactly who I am. So thank y'all again. Love y'all until next time. Be safe.